come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination hey you can help us out with that by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button all of that helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you who are into the sta- same weird and strange things that we are i can't speak tonight but uh, because yeah. you are weird and strange that is exactly it yes <laughs> because i myself am strange and unusual so uh these are the internet radio superstars michaela holly holly <laughs> 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 wow. Didn't, wow didn't mean that <laughs> sean I'm, I'm stuck in some sort of pattern i don't know wow. it's like wow, it's wow. Just, this is what i hear next yeah. Is, yeah, yeah okay and i'm colin uh holly tonight is on assignment no, she's not here despite uh, what i may say for the rest of the hour <laughs> um so uh tonight we watched the movie that was chosen by sean sean what did we watch tonight uh we watched 1995's Species, and I will not have it said any other way. Well, I'm sorry. I'm a, ah! I'm a species person, uh, Sean. I'm sorry. All right. That's, yeah, that's that's our first uh, <laughs> audience. Dear Brailler, what do you call it? Species? Species? It, like I told you off mic, Sean, when you say species, it sounds like you're calling a cat. Species. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I think I've always been a species guy. Yeah. Species. Yep. Species. Yeah. species. Yeah. All right. It I'm flows gonna, a little better. I'm going to try to do it differently tonight. Species. Probably species. more accurate. Okay, okay, so what year was uh, Species made? 1995. Again, the peak of sci-fi filmmaking, as it were. Yeah? <laughs> That's a... No, I'm joking. Oh, okay. That's not... Let, <laughs> we just watched this movie, right? <laughs> whatever your lead-up was last week to picking this, like when you like, were about to announce it. I think I said it, the same thing. But I thought... Yeah, I thought you were going to pick Contact. Because you said something about mid '90s sci-fi, I was like, "Oh, he's I gonna did. Pick contact. I picked, I picked the flip of contact. Yeah, yeah. 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 This, is, a, yeah. this is the exact flip. Of I thought that while we were watching it. Uh, so, who directed this movie? Uh, Roger Donaldson, who we would know from. He, we would know him from. I did not memorize it, but there's one I do know. Hold on. You want me to help you out with that? Dante's Peak is the one yeah, I was going to bring out. Dante's that's, Peak. That's the big one. No, Jaws with a volcano, as we like to. Jaws with a volcano. Oh. That is, there's a mayor. Yeah, I mean, it is. Oh, it cool. is but but it Dante's Peak competed with Volcano, Volcano right? Those were right? the opposing yeah. movies. The the greatest years when we had the opposing movies, you know, Dante's Peak, Volcano, uh, what uh, what was the other one? Uh, Deep Impact and mm-hmm. Armageddon. Yeah, that mm-hmm. was yeah. yeah. Deep Star Six and Leviathan. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. The, the great movie wars of the 90s. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he also did uh, No Way Out was a thriller yeah, with, with uh, Sean Young. Yeah, and uh, Kevin Costner. Um, he did, I just watched Sam Peckinpah's The Getaway, but Ronald, Roger Donaldson did the uh, Kim Basinger, Alec Baldwin remake of The Getaway. Remember that? Wow. Yes. <laughs> Forgot about that, actually. Yeah. yeah. And The Bounty, big big budget movie with uh, Mel Gibson and um, Anthony Hopkins. That was huh. the- uh, Really? The yeah, Bounty. Captain Never Lye heard of it. And all that. Yeah. Hmm. Really? No. The, the Bounty? story of the what year? mutiny on the- Bounty. Bounty. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> have they, made that, have they made that story like four times? Yes. Yeah. Marlon, Marlon Brando. Brando. And was, yeah. yeah. I've seen that one. Okay. So uh, from the year 1995, the pinnacle year of uh, 90s Sci-fi science yes. fiction <laughs> filmmaking. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, Isn't let's... Arrival right around the same time? The Arrival, I'm sorry. Ooh, that, I think that was like 1996. Feels yeah, like it's so this the same is, time. there's a little run happening I here. I think huh? sci-fi did like had a big thing going in the 90s, or at least around this era. Yeah. Again, with this in contact. Which I like, always just kind of like, well, yeah, uh, contact. Independence and... Day, 1996. We were really yeah. into like watching scientists do stuff in movies at this point in right? time. Even like though, science, right? any of it. Even though at that point, like watching scientists do something on in movies in 1990s was like probably the most boring thing you could get no blinking technology, light science technology was the most boring looking i think you could get yeah, in gray, the 90s yeah, it was just steel. To, yeah tan and just, just <laughs> you, you're just watching people look at dos monitors it is yeah. yeah it's not as good as the old ones when we got blinking light science no it's flip switching as, science none of that it's not as yeah no no beaker science it's no be- right? um it's not as good as now when we've got you know huge monitors and yeah monitor monitors. science yes okay. well and now oh, we yeah. have like beautiful floating like ui design yeah in right. movies yeah. now yeah. which yes. we now everything's yeah. the stark tech like yeah, the yeah. Holograms. holographic mm-hmm. so- yes. science yes. there we go holographic yes. science yeah. is what we, we have now yeah so what is what is the 90s science 
Dos, Ray, Dos Dos science. Ray science. Okay, Bay yeah. Science. Um, okay, so this movie um, was notable, I guess, uh, in some quarters. Because, well, it's notable for a couple of reasons. Well, but yeah, one, because true. of the design team, uh, it had H.R. Uh, Geiger, the uh, Geiger. Swiss artist. Geiger? Geiger? It's Geiger. Everyone calls it Geiger. I used to call it Geiger back in the day, but everyone says Not a Geiger counter. It's Geiger. A Geiger counter. Yeah. So this is like really the first movie that we've done that uh, that has had some of his designs. Obviously, he's like a huge influence in the uh, science fiction and horror community. Yes. When was the first time? I mean, aside from right alien well, right, that you was guys right. were you know aware of uh, the artwork of H.R. Geiger. When I worked at Barnes and Noble, I bought one of his books, like one of his art books. Is it like Necronomicon or something? Uh, It's just like a collection of his drawings and it's gross. Uh, well, yeah, because yeah, he's he's there's very dicks and, gross, and everything. Yeah, it's very sexual. Big long weird bendy penises and everything. <laughs> yeah. Like and it a lot was, of vaginas. Yeah, like yeah, weird bendy penises. Yeah, because yeah. it'll be like it'll start and it'll like bend and go all around like the whole frame uh, of the page and stuff. It's weird. Like, it's weird in a different way than you're expecting, if that makes sense. Right. Because you're like, I've seen Alien, I'm into this, and then you flip through and you're like, this is not what I thought. I am not into this. This is some bondage nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have his paintings hanging in my bedroom. (laughs) And everything's glossy and sticky. As we were talking about this movie, he like, all of his creatures always look like they've been, like, dipped in Vaseline. Mm -hmm. Always. They always look like that. Yeah, very hard to hold on to. Mm -hmm. All his monsters look like. I think I was... Did I, I'm wondering how old was I? I was like 10 when this movie came out. I'm wondering if I came across this before I came across Alien. I knew when really? I I knew when I saw this species you saying. Yeah, species. Yeah. Um I knew when I saw this that uh the same guy who designed the aliens designed her. That's mm-hmm. all I knew. I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know who Giger was and all that, but I knew that that was the link between the two. Maybe it's just good, like the the age gap but like i feel like growing up this movie was on tv a lot like yes. obviously heavily heavily edited but like but this i feel like people always acted like was like low rent in comparison to uh, like other guy like like obviously aliens like the yeah. best guy right. thing and yeah. this is like the trash version is what it, i was it, like the, always brought yeah, up a little thinking. more sexy maybe a little more sleazy mm-hmm. kind of i think, I think it's the word. reputation it had whether it is or not or what do you think about it i think it's the reputation it had. right yeah because you kind of have that it's like giger for hire or something like that where, right where, i mean basically i mean you know i mean alien was a job for well so the alien was jobs for hire, but yeah, he puts his passions into Ridley it. Scott saw the book um, Necronomicon, which had a painting in it when he's like, that's the alien. And so then he hired Geiger or Giger who designed the actual thing, the costume and all this other stuff. But wasn't uh, Geiger had also been I was keep I'm going to keep saying that. That's fine. Geiger had also <laughs> been wasn't he part of like uh, Alejandro Jodorowsky's Dune? Like yeah. wasn't he part yeah. of the crew that was designing stuff yes. for this I crazy so. big Dune movie that never got made. I want to go to the parallel universe where that movie <laughs> yeah. exists. Yeah, I, I <laughs> want to see that documentary is not enough. I need to see the movie. Yeah, yeah. I watch that movie. Yeah, yeah. it'd be wild. And most of those people who were conceptual artists on that ended up working on Alien. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew Giger um, through like album covers. You know, he did album covers covers for like Danzig. Oh, did he? Uh, he, he designed the mic stand for that guy in Corn. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. The guy oh, in Corn is a custom mic stand designed by Giger. Really? Yeah, yeah, it looks like exactly what you would expect that's it to. Cool. Alien with big boobs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, he's okay. known for like a. I I mean, I guess it's a it, it, the style has been called biomechanical. Like mm-hmm. you know, that's why every it's a a combination of like a fleshy thing and a mechanical thing, like Although, living technology. But it, I, I never really get the or- technology out of it. You know, when you look at his stuff, he's an airbrush artist, or mm-hmm. at least he was. He moved into like other you know stuff later mm-hmm. on, which you know is less famous. But it's like all these airbrush, nice, smooth, uh, you know, shapes that are um, disturbing. To say the least. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the technology part comes from, like, um, the uh, efficiency of the monster itself, how it's, in his design, it's very minimal. It feels like it's made to do exactly what it's made to do and nothing else. Mm-hmm. There's, like, no extra to it. Like, it's a minimalist kind of technology. Well, I guess he would design, like, I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, like, it, there'd be monsters... Or creatures, slimy things embedded in like 
um, metal looking yeah, shapes. or just like they would look like they're like all these tubes coming out of them. Yeah, or something, yeah. You know? oh, okay. like, so that's like, like yeah. Yeah. it's like it's doing pipes. something. Yeah, yeah. 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 So those and pipes are like yes, pipes. there's steam in them or something, but they right. look like yes. they're made of some kind of alien flesh. One thing I always noticed about his stuff was how like intricate and deep the details would go. Like there was no just like flat surface. Everything had ridges and folds <laughs> yeah. on it. Never ridges and surface. folds on fucking every single thing. Even the alien design in this down to like the top of her fingers. There's like ridges and yeah. everything mm-hmm. too. There's no flat surfaces. Yeah. Yeah. It's very cool. Uh, he uh, had several museums across the world. Um, some bars designed with like, you know, uh, based on his design. Uh, and he died you know, several years ago. I think yeah. he, uh, was in a hospital and took a fall and fell hit his down head. the stairs, right? Yeah. yeah, because okay, I remember because it was around the same time Dario Argento fell down the stairs and right, missed, yeah. that, missed that horror convention. And I was like, "Who's pushing all our horror icons <laughs> oh, down no. the stairs?" Oh no! <laughs> yeah, who yeah. would it be? Who's jealous of Giger and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah? So and I'm, Argento, that's uh, just like no more convention Baba. circuit for you guys. <laughs> well, you get to yeah. a certain age, right? Then it's like it's all yeah. uh, living in a one story house. That's a solution, yeah. I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. even that's kind of you know touch yeah. and go, I guess. For you know, once we once we get up to the age, but uh, <laughs> so uh, ninety five, then um, you were in the age of um, there's still like a lot of uh, interest in extraterrestrials. Uh, I think you know it's like. There, I can't remember if there was a lot of like alien abduction stuff, but you know, obviously the X Files TV show. There was right. uh, Carl Sagan's. Well, Contact had been like a book in the seventies. Mm-hmm. We keep mentioning that because this movie starts out out at the uh, the what is it, Arecibo? Uh, yeah, Arecibo. Mm-hmm. And they're talking about SETI. it. Feels like Contact at the beginning when Doesn't it starts. It? I was like, well, oh giant, wow, yeah, giant yeah. satellites, and yeah. then you know uh, all their their technology and all that stuff. Yeah, it does feel like it. Plus, they're um, we get a um, what's the thing that pops up at the beginning? Uh, it, like describing the cr- yeah, the yeah. crawl, the, yeah, this what, crawl the legend. Yes, yeah. describing SETI and all that stuff and and the signals and what they're doing and mm-hmm. it, um, did it say in the in that crawl that they had sent the signal out and got it back? No, we no, find we out that. Uh, during the plot because I actually kind of like that about the way that it opened. This movie doesn't explain a lot in that crawl. It just says that you know for thirty years. We've been, you know, listening with our satellite yes. dishes to, you know, sounds in space. And then we start with uh, young Michelle Williams, who's in this movie. What yeah. a good casting choice. <laughs> yeah, it is. She yeah. was even a good child actor. Like, right? Yeah. This is her first What a role. good find. Is it her first role? Yeah. First role, yeah. Yeah. Which apparently she said she didn't like it because she got made fun of a lot for this role. I don't know. Well, yeah, I can oh, understand n- yeah. not wanting to be a young girl associated with this movie. I get it. True. Like, you know. That is true. Yeah, because you grow up to be, become a uh, sex crazed uh, alien mm. adult. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is the other reason that people, you know, obviously know this movie. Yeah. It's, uh, so it has like a great cast. Is yeah. That, yeah, it like, does. Uh, so I'm not like, that's not hyperbole. Like, no, it has it's a great. great fucking cast because ben kingsley is in this movie yep. gandhi himself yeah mm-hmm. well yeah schindler's list yeah. probably at this mm-hmm. time he'd, he'd iron won man an Oscar. three colin yeah. <laughs> that's right the mandalorian the, the, the worst the, the worst red herring mandarin in the marvel mandarin. universe probably yeah. right mandarin himself oh, yeah. god what a terrible movie oh man uh but but he had to have been like a casting coup i think that yeah. was the appeal even of watching this movie back you know in 1995 was just like these are people you do not usually see in this type of science fiction adventure movie. Mm-hmm. We got uh, Ben Kingsley. We also have, I mean, next one I suppose would be Michael Madsen, yep. right? Who had, you know, scored in Reservoir Dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, is this like the biggest movie, most high profile movie of his career? Aside, that's not at a least, Quentin Tarantino movie? At least up until this I point. I think so. Yeah, it's gotta Cause, be. Because I went and looked at his IMDb while we were watching to be like, all right, there's gotta be more. And there's, there's, there's not a, yeah. like it's like not stuff I recognized at least when I'm scrolling. He's part of the ensemble. Like usually he's yeah. part of the ensemble. Yeah, but then he's been doing a lot of like he's a leading man in a lot of like direct to well I mean as you call yeah. direct yeah. to video movies you know but the, he never really had that kind of I just expected especially you know like the, if if he was in low budget indies with Tarantino and that mm-hmm. and then this is the graduation to like mm-hmm. Metro Goldwyn Mayer we're throwing right. tons right. of money. Kind of a leading man role, 
and then like what happens? Does he I not play well with others? Well, or do you, do you, is there, right. like, you know, based on this, there, do you right? think he should be? Yeah, I thought he was good in this. Like, how do we feel about his acting? I thought he had kind of like a like a low energy, low effort charm. If that makes sense. Well, yeah. Like, but I think that's him, though. I think he's got, right. I but is that why are you hire an actor yeah. because they come with those qualities? Well, right. And I think he fits this part like perfectly well. That's feels like it's just him. Yeah, but you're I, thinking he's maybe of a limited range or something? I, I think so. I like Michael Madsen, but I think he might be of a limited range. I mean, that just may be me, but... But, I mean, there's plenty of actors that have made careers out of playing the same character over and over again. Yeah, like, that's, true. you know, that's an entirely possible route. I feel like Desmond Harrington on Dexter saw this movie and just decided, for my character on Dexter, I'm just going to do a low-rent version of this. Because, mm-hmm. yeah. like, the way they speak, the mannerisms, it is... All the same, he's got a except swagger. it's worse when Desmond Harrington does it. Yeah, he does. He's the best. At, he's the best he is at what he does, but what he does isn't very nice. I would say is his. Yeah, but he has. There's a lot of scenes in this movie where I was just kind of watching him and like, okay, he's delivering the scripted lines, but then it felt like at the end of every scene he would do some kind of ad lib, and then they kept it in. Right, like that was the out for every scene. He's like, hey. Check this out. Yeah, you mm-hmm. want a piece of candy, or yeah. you know, like he would do all this shit. And they just left it mm-hmm. in, or right? flirt with right. Mark, Mark Helgenberg, which is, I mean, which is nice. It's great. It adds to the movie. I, yeah. I think the personalities of this little ensemble are like in perfect balance with each other. Yeah, I actually really like this group together. It is yeah. nice, especially because they, yeah, all their personalities kind of fit. They all serve a distinct purpose within the group. They mm-hmm. all have their own, you know, talents that they're mm-hmm. bringing to it. Mm-hmm. Michael Madsen is um, well. If they call him in, uh, it's because they want something dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's his mm-hmm. job. Yeah, we've also got uh, Forrest Whitaker's in this movie. Another like strange choice for a big, you know. I, uh, this is where it gets a little flimsy for me because like everyone else, like like has a specialization, has a, has a degree, has an has a like is like the best in their field at what they do, and it's he the just best has path they have, and he just has some Shyamalan level <laughs> m- magical quality that has no basis in science. That not, I'm like, do you not okay, in, like uh, em- em- empath people, people not the way it works in this movie. Well, no, yeah. he's basically because they're using him as like he's a psychic are you guys for you know they call but they don't it, call it that no though. no because i think he have the like balls to he call feels it that. deeply is what he says in the movie yeah because i think you know a lot of people do have that kind of like oh psychic so it's like well he's just gonna be an empath he feels things and they never really i mean that's what we were saying it's we were loosely talking defined the movie. but i like that it was restrained enough in the way that they did it because a lot of times he's just like i feel like she went this way you know it's never uh, <laughs> but there's a part where he's standing 10 feet away from her and can't tell she's there. The, yeah. Like the way it turns on and off doesn't make any sense. And then, and like, ever, like I said, everyone else is based in science or history or something. And this guy is just based in like, I just have this magical gift. And to me, that's like where it's like, okay, then the rules of this movie aren't very well defined. Well, he becomes like the, I suppose you need that character because he's like the bloodhound in some way <laughs> yeah. that can kind of take you to, you know, when the, but when then just make him a like, psychic. You know what I'm saying? Because we know that, like, the U.S. government has allegedly used psychics for, like, mm-hmm. crime things and to find missing people. We know that's an established thing. Whether it's, like, legit or not, it is a thing that happens. So just have the balls to be like, he's a psychic. He can see shit. And you can even do a, a, a thing it. where, I mean, I think they kind of give it to him in this, where they don't, like, okay, yeah, he's a psychic. And then you give him the scene where he, like, gets something right. Dead mm-hmm. on. I mean, they do yeah. it in this movie. But not in that sort of yeah, way. I guess I, I just took it that he was the psychic yeah, or whatever. He, he liked to he call feels. himself empath, but it's right. like, you know, you're here. But he doesn't like that because it cheapens does. what he does. Yeah. I'm guessing, yeah. But yeah. like, the, for me, like, if you're an empath and you can just feel emotions, then someone could fake an emotion to throw you off, right? If they know that that's your ability. I'm wondering, but I'm wondering if he can tell the difference. In this whole world we don't know, of, empath, not. of empath science that we're talking about, I'm wondering if he could tell the difference. We don't know because it's not no well defined. And apparently he can feel the feelings of anything, even aliens that are like literally cells in a, in a mm-hmm. microscope. He can feel those feelings. <laughs> yep. That's how that's how sensitive he is. He can tell when something's wrong, but he can't tell when he's ten feet away from the alien they're hunting. So. Yeah, I wonder if she the, can turn it the inconsistencies yeah. are. <laughs> that's the thing. If they would have established that, like she's figured out his thing and knows how to like cloak it, then that would well, have been. God knows they had time in this movie. Yeah, to do so. in the they one sure scene did. where he did lose her, where she was standing ten feet yeah. away from him, she did transform, and I was like, okay, is this going to be the like logical get out of jail right. card because she he can't 
detect her because she tra- changed from like a where she's creature. watching him. Yeah, yeah. And the, when just after she yeah, and he's like standing yeah. there, yeah, like yeah, yeah. it feels like she's still here. Then she turns human. And he's like, eh, okay, right. and he walks mm-hmm. off. It's like that, the human part. What he could say not explained in the but movie. No, it's but. not because then he could sense the the fucking well, eggs no, growing I'm, no, in I'm, the. No, I'm not. Uh, I'm not saying that's a hard rule of the movie. I'm yeah. just. It's it guessing. changes depending on the scene what the rules are. So it's, it's kind of like well, if our script can't take us there, Force Whitaker will. For, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yes. Well, that's what psychics do, and well, that's, yeah, that's yeah. What the function that they serve in movies, yes. I guess. Um, uh, ben Kingsley's the leader of this outfit, a government scientist, maybe. May because uh, he has very, a lot of authority. He's an he's head of high a up somewhere. Yeah. yeah, he can get helicopters in us. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So if he's got he some it, power. He can get it done, right? Uh, Mark Helgenberger, who I guess now is mostly known for being in CSI. Yeah, that's a shame. At the time this came out, I remember she was in a movie in a show called China Beach with Dana Delaney. That was like a big. She was in China Beach. Yeah. Okay. And uh, also we have Alfred Molina, mm, right. who's in this movie, who mm-hmm. later went on Doc to Ock be himself. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently going to be Doc Ock again. <laughs> Bring it on. Yeah. So this me- makes our team. There's five people then in this ensemble who are going to hunt down an alien because uh, Michelle Williams isn't Michelle Williams for that long. She's no. been grown. Well, explain to us how. OK, so this is an alien invasion movie, but in the contact era. <laughs> yeah, well, Keep yes. bringing it back. To and Carl the Sagan. arrival area, too. And the arrival area. Right? Because yes. somebody figured out this is Dennis Feldman, the writer, was yes. like, they probably won't cross like space. That's like damn near impossible to do. Travel at light speed and whatever. Right. So, so they send they gonna information do because you can do that. Um, Did you guys think in the beginning when they said that they were sending out like signals with like the code of human DNA into space, were you guys immediately like, that's a terrible idea? Because that was my first thought. I was like, oh, God, are we actually doing that? Because that's a terrible idea. Yes, when he started listing off, he's like, we sent out our DNA, we sent out a map of the world. I'm like, you're giving them the instructions to invade? Yeah. uh, They went on on the Voyager space. Here's here's the keys to Uh, the We're also pretty uh, reactive to heat and cold. I don't know if you guys know that. <laughs> hey, nuclear football! Here you go. Right. We'll have it. Like, uh, yeah, when that popped up, I'm like, "Wow, we're giving them a lot, aren't yeah. we?" Yeah, oh, we I was like, that. I immediately had a panic, and then I was like, "Oh God, I have to, I have to tell myself that we have not really done that as a society because if I know for sure we've sent yeah. that shit out, I'm going to tell you, have an <laughs> like, sent, I can't yeah, have that existential the crisis. Like, <laughs> they've sent your information yeah. out of space at this point, I believe. I know, but it's like I know we have that weird little plaque. That's like floating around with like the crude illustrations on it of like yeah. humans here, yeah, no, like that shit's out there. The Voyager but spacecraft has uh, like a gold plated yeah, record. Yeah, it has it. like yeah, the and de- a yeah. yeah, and all that stuff. But isn't but it, it has- like Beatles music and shit on there? No, like- it has like uh, samples of math. It has it has like all no, sorts we of can't shit. Do yeah, do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're giving them the building blocks to break <laughs> well, us down. This is a whole new existential crisis. <laughs> better, I didn't know I was gonna have. Better so. or worse than Hitler? Like, like worse than sending Hitler out into space, yeah. and getting that back. Well, they were like, what could it hurt? You know. We'll show you who we are, and you show us who you are. Yeah. Well, it, it, Colin, it can hurt a lot because any well, yeah. any alien that can come visit us is more advanced. Than I know because I saw so, species. Yeah. Right. It's not good. How do they? So how are they going to invade the planet? Well, like we said, um, they wouldn't travel, or at least according to the writer, uh, they wouldn't travel that distance to come see us. They send us information. So what they do is they send us back uh, a new DNA model, combining our DNA with apparently alien DNA. Yeah, they, well, they they, well, they send theirs, the plans, theirs, yeah. and here's how you can combine it with yours, basically. Yes. Do but they s- I like the way that they first these aliens who you know obviously later we learn have malicious intent on the planet because mm. basically they're going to send the biological weapon that's going to destroy the planet. But first they send you like. Here's uh, what was it? Uh, right. This is I missed this. I haven't seen this in a while, so I missed this the first time. They they what? Cold fusion. Cold basically? fusion. There's <laughs> something like, like that. Yeah. We have uh, uh, we have limitless energy now, which is just kind of dropped into the conversation. Yeah. First they sent us this, and we were like, great. Right. Then they sent us the DNA, and we were like, great. great okay. Too. We're like, well, oh wait, no, <laughs> we shouldn't make something out of that. <laughs> yeah. That really is like send them something nice to you know deflect from what we actually want you to do, and then send them the shit to make their own destruction. Yeah, I know that's like a brilliant. <laughs> evil I know, alien and like, plan. what disturbs me the most about this is like, this is exactly how our government would handle this. Mm-hmm. Feels like, like it, doesn't it. Like, and that was the same issue. Like, a- issue I had watching District Nine is like, I couldn't even be like, huh, what a fantasy world. I'd be like, no, this is exactly how our fucking government yeah, would handle this. Well, I think this. it's like, just how science would handle it because yeah. it's like, okay, they it, the experiment they show is conducted under like a controlled circumstance. Mm-hmm. They you know inject what twenty. Uh, 
uh, human ova with the DNA cells, and they get three viables. They freeze two of them, which, of course, opens the door for uh, a sequel. Yeah. And then they grow one, and it grows at an exponential rate, as they always do, of course, and into a little girl. And then they cage the girl. This is Michelle Williams' character in this uh, biodome. This is right? brutal. Yeah, because the movie it's opens up with brutal. the gassing of a tiny yeah, because, child. But this is what I like. You don't know what's going on because the legend at the beginning hasn't told you like the whole backstory. So right. you just like you start with this girl being gassed and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> By Ben Kingsley, who's crying at the fact that <laughs> he has course, to kill yes. her. But yeah, he tells her, I'm sorry before he fucking gasses her. Yeah. And like, oh, I'm sorry. This does not feel like the most e- most efficient way to put her out. You know what I'm saying? Gassing her whole chamber. Like, just give her some fucking cyanide pills in her food or something. Yeah. Or, give her you an know? injection while she's sleeping. I was going to say, or a like lethal not- injection. Yeah, like, there's, like, this is not efficient at all. Well, she was sleeping at the beginning of the movie, when she, she woke up during this, yeah. uh, while this uh, is true, going true, on. True, but, of course, true. she survives the cyanide gas and jumps out the window and escapes into the night. And Leaking we, the cyanide gas yeah, into the facility. Everybody. Yeah, in yeah. the facility. <laughs> so she can escape. It's a massive disaster. And so we have to hire uh, Preston what's his face preston uh, press press yeah. press okay and the crew and we're gonna put them together they're gonna hunt the alien uh creature down this is actually that's a pretty good idea for a movie it is <laughs> oh, yeah. definitely especially because if she mates it's all over okay well how us. do we get to that because that right. becomes like the central gist of this the alien plan is to uh, basically, well, see, the aliens didn't know if it was if the humans would make a male or female uh, creature with their right. DNA. True. The idea is just that at some point the thing is going to mate with humans and create new ones, and the new ones are going to exponentially then destroy the the planet. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, um, but what happens to young? Uh, her name is Sill. They give her mm-hmm. the name Sill because I think that's what like uh, it's an acronym for something. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think oh, I read the thing that was where her DNA was grown. Uh, room S one L. Okay, so there they, you go. Yeah. Gotcha. So still, still, and she uh, escapes, and then, uh, and then like a hobo in a movie, like she might as well have like a bindle on right, a stick, it, it, man. Yeah, she, she jumps yeah. on a train. <laughs> she is. It's like yeah, it's old Red Skelton just hanging out on the train <laughs> right. going across town. Um, yeah, and then she ends up she. Smartly makes her way. She observes humans as she's out and about. She learns rapidly while she's observing. Yes, everything goes very rapidly. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. They do. They grow and they... (laughs) And they get smarter as they they go. they rapidly, yes. Um, Even though she's like three months old, she looks like a 12-year-old, but she's actually three. Yes. So she is a child most of the movie, yes. Mm -hmm. Even mentally as as she's going. Um, She ends up up on a, a commercial train. At one point, after she's stolen baggage from somebody and a wallet and a tiny TV and all that stuff, um, she ends up on a train and um, she's exploring everything and she gets a, um, what did they say? She's packing up, she's storing up calories or something like that for something. So she's like gorging on uh, pudding and bananas. It's pretty gross. It. Kind of feels the like sideways it. bite into the banana was. Oh yeah, she does. I always love that stuff though. When like you have an alien who comes to Earth and you give him a, some kind of food thing and they yeah. look at it like, how are you supposed to eat this thing? She just goes right through the rind of the. Yeah, Col- Colin, by that logic, that other dude was also an alien because he grabbed a banana and just put it on a plate and walked out with it. You don't yeah, need true. a plate for I a mean, banana. That's, that's weirder than eating the banana. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, just tear through it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but she ends up, um, uh, she's pretty much going through puberty rapidly at this mm-hmm. point, and she ends up getting like uh, um, a great skin effect, I think, until we get the uh, bad CGI, but a great skin effect where uh, her hands and face are bubbling and stretching out and everything, and then tentacles come out and stick her into the corner of the bathroom mm-hmm. and cocoon her. Yeah, which is a pretty good, uh, Steve Johnson was the guy who did yes. the, uh, the, the makeup effects. Uh, we've talked about him on this show, obviously, before. Yes. We've also, the arrival that we mentioned mm-hmm. earlier, we did an episode on that. You should go back and check. Um, Definitely. Scorpions and whatnot. It's yeah, yeah, with Charlie Sheen. Yes. Arrival. Uh, the arrival. Um, but yeah, she gets cocooned, and she comes out of the cocoon as Natasha Henstridge. Yes. Uh, so this is Natasha Henstridge's first role. Uh, she ended up going on to movies with Jean Claude Van Damme. Good for her, <laughs> right? And Maximum right. Risk was that the uh, one? <laughs> yes, yeah, I watched that the other day. 
Well, she was probably like her biggest movies where she was in the 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 whole eight yard whole whole nine yards and oh, the whole was. ten yards, right? Yes, that big ensemble. And then I always remember her as being on that show. She spies. She spies. That's the other <laughs> one I was remembering. Yeah, she's been in a lot of TV. She's still doing TV now. I was looking at her IMDb and it's just like random episodes of TV over yeah, and over. She's still out there, still working. She yep. was in. She worked with John Carpenter and mm. uh, on Ghost of Mars. Unfortunately, right. like his last theatrical right. uh, major mm. film. Um, but she has like a, I don't know, I mean, uh, uh, I was going to say it's a tough role in this just because there's a lot of nudity involved in this. Yeah, like, I feel for her, man. That's rough. This is, uh, and this is the other reason why everybody remembers this movie, especially if you mm. were, you know, of a certain age, well, I suppose anybody, you know, of a certain age who sees this uh, movie, uh, it's like Life Force, where it feels like there's <laughs> a naked alien woman Walking around the streets of Los Angeles, right? Yeah, in the entire yeah. movie. Yeah, remembering it, it felt like she's naked a lot in that movie. I mean, she is naked a yes. lot in this movie. Not, yeah, like, not not walking the streets, but it's close. Yeah. yeah. Well, I counted it this time because oh, I was you? like, you know, I'm curious because uh, I've been uh, listening to a lot of the philosophy of Roger Corman, who is basically mm. like, if you show a woman topless, like within the first so many minutes of your movie, and then once, like in the middle, and once somewhere else. They will think the audience will think that they saw a lot more than they actually did. So I'm like, I'm how, so okay. So what did they? Theory? Yeah, I was testing the theory. So it was like seven, seven times. I think seven or eight okay. times. But I'm like, that was more than I. That's had a lot. There's right. that That's one time lot. she is full on naked jumping in that lady's car. Yeah. Like it's yeah. not yes. just topless. Like there's. Yeah, she is a Man. game performer. Let's yes. say it that way. She was 21 years old at the time that she wow. made this movie. She was a Came fashion model. model. Yep. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember. Because Couldn't wait she, to get out of it, apparently. Like, and she become was a movie star. Right, really hoping for this role to get out of modeling because it was, uh, as you can guess, draining at being a model was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, Colin? Remember she, your modeling? Yeah, guess? I mean, you know, I was. Draining, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, very tiring. Yeah. She's Canadian? No? I have no okay, idea. Okay, I might be wrong. Um,. But yeah, I always remember because uh, she's the same age that I am. So when I saw oh. the movie, I'm like, oh, Natasha Henstridge. Um, but anyway, you were saying, uh, Michaela, that there's uh, that we've kind of changed in our approach to movies now. Oh, my and there God. Are- yeah. <laughs> yeah. You you really ready for me to pull up this soapbox, Colin? Are you yes, sure you're because ready? I am curious as all hell to hear your opinions on this. Mm. Movies are asexual now. All movies are asexual now, and I blame Disney for a big chunk of that just because they purely own so many movies now, and everything they make has to have mass market appeal. And even going um, backwards, they're desexualizing but, everything. But yeah, yeah, exactly. But as an adult with no children, I feel like no movies are made for me anymore. There's nothing adult. There's nothing there, like eroticism, romanticism, sensuality. None of these things exist in movies anymore, Gone. and it's fucking depressing. I know. Like, w- I, th- I was thinking about like superhero movies, and I was like, wow, the most salacious thing we got was like Wonder Woman like laying in bed with a guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Like, think about how asexual those fucking Marvel movies are. Yeah. Well, there was the one. There was the Avengers where Black Widow had like a relationship with the Hulk or whatever, and that. You but know, that but, was a talking. They, they right. were just talking yeah. about and their it, relationship. It felt uh, like forced. completely, yeah, forced and mm-hmm. manufactured. I was yeah. like, well, at least Captain America and his next door neighbor. There's a little bit of a spark there, yeah. but that remains. But that's so ch- it, that it was is just so like, chaste, and it's mostly in conversation. Like, like the like. Wonder Woman laying in bed with Chris Pine is like the most sexy thing we've gotten in a superhero movie in a long time, yeah. and that's yeah. fucking well, depressing. Well, maybe superhero movies aren't where you find it, but I mean, I think but I why agree not? with you. But I agree with you that there are there like anything. Those X Men movies now. had sex scenes. Those original X Men movies had sex scenes. Jean Grey, you see her fucking straddling Wolverine in that one scene when in X Two, I think, when she's like. It using her powers I, on no, him. There's, those, those were much more adult movies, but there are no movies made for me anymore, and I'm a fucking viable movie audience. I know, I think. And I like, I like, it doesn't need to be everywhere, but it's not anywhere. Why do you think that is? Because, well, like I said, because Disney owns so much, and also I think everyone just kind of like sees how much money Marvel movies make, and they're like, mass appeals the way to go. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> what's more mass appealing than boobs for all the young men in the world? Like, that's a ma- that's mass appeal. Like, like a movie like movies that. are afraid to take chances. They're afraid to push boundaries. They're afraid to do anything that risk. might upset they don't anybody. Like risk. Yeah, like exactly. Sex is risk, and our yeah. and our rating is a risk now nowadays. Nothing is fucking yeah, unless it's I think, well, I don't, <laughs> Deadpool came to mind. It's like in our rating is kind of yeah thing, unless it is something huge yeah like that. and look how successful that movie was and still studios won't take the risk you but know I, I like think I see, see i i think nudity has moved mostly to and sex has moved to 
to television, pre- uh, premium yeah. TV. Yes. Yeah. But so, usually, yes. and it could be just the shows that I'm watching, mm-hmm. it always seems to be in a kind of a negative way. You know, it's always yeah. like... It's always uh, it's, it's always not, sleazy or negative. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's not like you know this is uh, like an encouraging healthy kind of you know. I mean, even titillation in a way is like exactly. It doesn't I, have I, to be raunchy. It could, yeah. The, yeah where, right. Where's the eroticism and the sensuality and even romanticism? Like, yeah, why is there yeah, yeah. no romantic yeah. elements to Marvel movies? Even yeah. there's nothing. <laughs> I know. Literally, like devoid of any sort of emotion other than like heroism yeah we gotta like, go get the bad yes. guy yeah. exactly and i or we're having a moral like, uh you know issue with this but there's no yeah right I mean, it is like there's just there's it's the so movies frustrating are as an adult. Of, of sexuality and i wonder if you know i mean just you know after me too and all that if there's just like a hesitancy on the part of studios to ask people to participate in you know scenes I mean, because possibly. there's power right. dynamics taking I'm place. Sure I can see that. Once in a while, you get somebody like Charlize Theron, who's an established star, who goes like, oh, "I don't care," you know, like, right? I, I, you know, or something like right. that. And I'm thinking about Atomic <laughs> Blonde, but right. like a lot of times, it's like you don't want to ask. Uh, maybe you know, you don't want to ask a, uh, a a relatively newcomer to the acting. Right. You know, industry like, OK, you're going to do this. And like, is it somehow going to pigeonhole you as you're going to be taking your clothes off the rest of your career? Right. But Natasha Henstridge, I don't think did. Right. Yeah. You know, after this is like and she still had a career because right. maybe she came in at the right time or something that obviously she's going to be known for the rest of her life as a girl in species. And there's a lot of mm. like, you know. <laughs> right. right. Well, and to, to borrow a little bit from another podcast I listened to, We Hate Movies, they did an episode on Wild Things this week. Oh. And they were talking See, about how like, one, yeah. because you imagine if that movie came out now, it would never fucking happen. It'd be scandalous. Exactly. You know? Like, when did we get, like, when did we step backwards into a more puritanical society as far as movies are concerned? Mm. Like, I can't, when did this fucking happen? I feel like I fell asleep and woke up and all of a sudden movies are puritanical as fuck it's now. It, it feels like it started in the 90s but yeah. it's not true because obviously you look the at 90s the stuff was, in the 90s yeah, compared was, to now was the, uh, 90s was the resurgence or maybe the 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 golden age of the erotic thriller yes period. exactly right. no, yeah, that was peak. well and yeah. okay so when it's, you guys saw a simple favor we talked a lot about that off mm-hmm, mic on this yeah. show that movie i feel like got so much buzz because it dared to be a little bit more adult but even still it was kind of chased in how it handled mm-hmm. it like oh, you yeah. didn't see anything it was all talked about yeah. in that movie and like but still that was like the closest we could get to like a wild things nowadays was a simple favor which in yeah. comparison is pretty tame like I, mean, yeah. I guess i don't like necessarily expect adult uh content or emotions or you know situations from you know avengers movies because i mean there is an immaturity at play just in the subject well right. matter you know but like yeah i would like mature films <laughs> and maybe yeah. you know the audience yeah. is out there going like there's all the and they're gonna lift stuff a bunch of stuff that's happening right it, now but and I mean, I, I, it is out there but for the most part it does seem like uh hollywood is basically anti-sex you exactly know, like yeah, anti, it, you know, anti normal any human, human emotion other yeah. than like whatever the plot calls for yeah and you know? romance romance yeah. is also it seems like and, uh, out of like an you know you go see an action movie and there's yeah. not going to be right uh, and romantic like, interest no and anymore. you'll get people complaining like why are they shoving the romance in my action movie and yeah stuff like that and i understand like i'm not going to get in my marvel movies that's fine whatever mm. that's fine uh, that's not for marvel's not making movies for me they don't care about me going to see it they care about the family of four and then their kids are going to buy all the toys and all that shit that's who they care about but like it feels like every studio is taking after what marvel and disney do mm. and that's the problem is that their approach is bleeding into all movie genres and i don't like that and this will and this will keep going it always does a circle until somebody makes that one movie outside yeah. of that that yes. goes like a big. hit and yeah. like, yes. what's and going on like, here we right. got to and then we circle it. back yeah. into that but it seems like deadpool was going to do that but it all, but Deadpool's like it still fits in the mold because it's still the superhero stuff. So I don't think that's the movie that was going to break us out of that cycle and to be like, hey, let's explore this. People seem to like this. Mm. That wasn't going to be the one to do it. I don't know, but eventually we'll get back to that again. But yeah, uh, I think everything knows? runs in a cycle. Yeah. And, yeah. I can't imagine a movie like Species coming out now. No, it wouldn't I, fucking happen. Yeah, I mean, it'd be it'd be from a major studio, right? You know, yeah, like for, to. To just be out there. Like, I'm sure, like you were saying, like, people would uh, write in and say, well, this movie's out there, this movie's out there, but I'm not sitting here right now with, like, 
major advertising is not hitting me for a movie like this. Exactly. Like I don't care about if Shudder's making something like right. this. Oh, I right. want to oh, see... Right. You just got you know. released, you can get it on VOD. Like, no, major filmmaking, yeah. major movies. Right. That's not, what we're talking about. Right. Yeah. We're not, yeah. I'm not seeing that at all right no. now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because we don't matter as an audience. Because I mean, they can't make money off of us. Well, that's the thing. It's like when Species came out, it didn't seem like it was that daring at the time. I mean, it was, you know, obviously, yeah. you know, I was like... You know, it felt my, daring to me as a ten. Well, no, child. but my my reference point for it was Life Force. You know, it's like okay, right. true, you know, true. just because it's thematically similar, it's a science fiction movie with a woman who's you know using her sexual well, a creature, I guess, who looks like a woman who's using her sexuality to you know invade humanity. Yes, right. Um, but it, like I said, because of all the other films around, you know, Basic Instinct was, uh, I think, around this time. Uh, I'm not sure a few years earlier that you know. And the the films were just doing that at the time, so it didn't seem out of the ordinary. It was right. just you know putting your uh, you know eroticism in your. Is this movie's not really that erotic? It's not really an erotic movie. I think it has like nudity for titillation, but it also like the it, second it, one's it, more erotic than this one. The er- eroticism is not a part of the plot. No, because yeah. it's it has this kind of matter of fact like human biological thing where she wants to mate with a. Uh, male right. to produce the offspring. That is the plot. How does that happen? Right. Well, she's going to, you know, like entice, sexually entice them into uh, mm-hmm. sexual situations so she can make this happen. Mm-hmm. Um, it turns out that several of the people that she uh, tries to mate with, and this is, you know, like they're the, the, the crew is trying to find her as she's doing this. Yeah. She goes after several guys, one that she meets um, in a in the, club. In the club. Yes. And uh, but it turns out she's able to somehow detect that he's a uh, diabetic. Yes, and so she kills him. Well, he, well, uh, he tries to force himself on. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, she yeah. kills him because she expresses no several times, and he still forces himself on her. So she shoves yes. her alien tongue through the back of his throat. Right, because we go. have that yeah. awesome effect. Uh, lesson, a uh, lesson to learn. That's gentlemen. right. Well, but see, this is the thing. Like where she, it, it I, I don't want to say that she is a positive role model or anything like that not right or but it i like the fact that she is able, like no i changed my mind you know no. and but you know and has that kind of like she's using sexuality as her strength right you know, that's i guess the right. thing that the character has going for uh, there's a scene i want to talk about that happens before this um so when they are like in the lab and they're doing like another test with with the dna and the egg yeah and then the camera breaks so they have to replace it this scene escalates so quickly. It was stressful. Oh my! G- I was just like, I don't know. What, like I was, it was a very effective domino effect in that because it happens moment. really fast. It feels like a scene that was in like The Rock, right? It was the- really chaotic and stressful. I was like, oh my god! So like, right? When we're uh, what, one of the the orbs breaks open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh my god, we got it. they're combining right, yeah. and whatever. Uh, yeah, this was uh, she. Or, uh, yeah, yeah, they yeah. they they inject the, They're like, well. We should probably see what this thing looks like uh, without the human, uh, you know, right. shell they, they on have, it. At this point, they have no idea what they're dealing with because uh, Michelle Williams has not, as far as we know at this point, trans- like shown any technically alien um, characteristics at this point, I don't think. Like, they know she is of two DNAs, but she hasn't turned into Giger's alien at this point. Right. Um so they're like, well, we're going to see what it looks like yeah, without so, the so they, mask on right. it. So they want to recreate the experiment, grow one of their own, because yeah. they want to find out if it has any, you know, uh, weaknesses or what have you. So that help to help them destroy it. I thought Ooh. the effects in that scene were great. There's only like there's very minimal uh, garbage CG. bags, man. It, th- is garbage that what it was? Bags. It's garbage bags. Inf- like, which is like up. an air pump that they inflate. It's, it's like they had garbage bags. I think garbage bags and pantyhose is what Steve Johnson said on in the it looks great, but it looks we're great. talking about it looks like a fungus or something. Yeah, that's but like it's spreading like super inflates, fast. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. like inflates. Yeah, and yeah. and but, there's tentacles that um, spin around and are chasing them and everything, which was another thing. They all they did was put they created a tentacle, put it on the end of a drill, and that's all. That's how you get that spin and stuff and everything. Like real simple lo-fi stuff really gives you like some good. Um, production value yeah, in this. Yeah. But have you ever had one of those days where you like you stub your toe on everything, you drop everything, like yes, nothing goes right? Yes. That's like 
a whole day like that condensed <laughs> into <laughs> one I scene. Well, why did you drop the bolt? I accidentally locked the door. Well, yeah, why did you do that? Yeah, it, it was like a like a domino fell over, and all of a sudden these two people are gonna die. Like right. that's oh, how this should escalate. We have to burn escalated. the room now. What? But, yeah. Okay, but there's two minutes before the room burns. There's plenty of time to get out. I know. There's so plenty much, of time to get so out. There's so much yelling and just like open the fucking door, and it's just um, I'm surprised somebody didn't punch Ben Kingsley like two minutes sooner. Yeah, because yeah. he's doing the responsible thing. I was like, can't open the door. We'll contaminate everybody. Of course, yeah. they eventually, you know, yeah, but they like, get out. You know, but. they could they could ve- you have two minutes before the room burns. You could very right. easily just open the door, let right. them out, I can't and let, let the it room... escape. I don't think it will. I think it's in the thing. Let them out. It was pretty well. Ca- like, well, and he was saying he couldn't open the door when it was still in the box. And it's like, well, open it now while it's still in the box. Yeah. Like, now is the time to do it. Don't well, wait. Because that's what I was thinking. But yeah. I guess he's thinking of like spore contamination or yeah. something. Sure, which whatever. Is a, which is a but thing you'd to still have that after the they come right. up with the solution that they do. Right. Ben Kingsley kind of plays the movie like uh i thought i'm like this is an interesting perspective for this actor he's playing it like he's an alien Uh, (laughs) right or he's just kind of this hunter alien where you know uh he doesn't understand he's always asking it's like he's an android it's like he's the explain to me what's happening here you know it's like i hired you you're going to tell me what she's doing what is she doing right now what is she thinking why would she go there why is she doing this uh, and he's got these other four people to, to explain this to him. But whenever you watch him, when he goes into like, you know, the club or whatever, he, just his head movements is like he's, you know, right. he's, he's still, just, because he's, he's like still the doing Terminator. The <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's still doing it. He's studying everything. Like, this is all still part of the experiment. I was expecting him to be like, we have to bring it back alive. Well, he, I was expecting yeah, no, that kind like, of talk from like, him. Kill no, this fucking dead. thing. Yeah. No, but you know, like, that's like always a Sartain. thing in he's movies. He's the of this movie. There's he's, like, al- letting him go just to see what happens. And let's put Michael Myers on the streets. But there's always, like, a... Oh, don't <laughs> don't use that as, like, a reference. <laughs> All right. But, I did do that on purpose to get a reaction. I will <laughs> like, say that. I'm sorry. It, it, it kind of... But, like, in movies, there's always that one scientist who's so dedicated to his craft is like you can't kill the experiment yeah. you know yeah, like i think Spli- splice from, has yeah, that problem yeah, yeah. um you know and so i was kind of surprised that he was like bring her back a lot he wasn't like bring her right. back a lot yeah. he yeah. like, no nah, we should probably kill it yeah. Yeah. yeah it's not gonna be good and so we're gonna take this thing down they track her to a couple of clubs uh she eventually oh she gets into an accident at one point walking around in the street <laughs> she gets fucking Angeles. wrecked by this car <laughs> she, she keeps getting picked up by these like super rich dudes uh and taken back to their that's her that's her dollar. alien power apparently get picked yeah. up by fucking rich men yeah yeah she does Let me kill get a that hold guy, of that. uh like uh, before they're actually able to uh, consummate the deal in the hot tub because mm-hmm. the hunters are at the door mm-hmm. and so she kills him so she can move on she takes another woman hostage uh there's a whole bunch of I forgot about that with part. The, yeah yeah with that's the, a that's a uh, that's a plan right there that is yeah because i was like i don't remember that part because yeah. it feels like or i didn't remember it prior I, yes. to watching this because it was like okay i remember that we have to get to the next uh piece of business which is them mm-hmm. all at the club and she infiltrates the group right uh but there is like this whole thing where she has to fake her own death yeah but to uh, throw everybody off the trail which, this is pretty oh smart my- God, this <laughs> this poor stunt woman. Holy shit, she almost got ran over by oh, that yeah. car. I mean, this is a whole thing. She uh, kidnaps a woman, um, holds her for a couple days, cuts off her own thumb. She's well, she's doing all this, and we don't know like where she's going at this point. Mm-hmm. Like it's all set up before the fact. Um, she's filling up gas uh, gas cans, mm-hmm. stealing extra cars. Like she's this is a plot going on yeah. here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and she ends up like we said, faking her own death with the woman she kidnaps. Um, and when this car goes yeah. down the hill and she, the stunt woman jumps out the side, she hits that ground hard and she rolls a little bit in a way that I don't feel like she was supposed to. And <laughs> yeah. she almost gets under the wheel See, but of that I car. I love this stuff. We always <laughs> talk about it. I love right? it when it the looks like somebody almost really going, almost like, got, like, yeah. this movie has real helicopters flying it around. Does. A lot. In multiple scenes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Flying right over the actors. We got that old shot of like, we're right shit. behind the helicopters. Now they just put CGI and do it yeah. for cheap. I'm like, does it really save you that much? money but whatever logistics i suppose sure um the uh i like that she planned all that stuff out she gets most of her ideas it seems like off of like television and just observing (laughs) uh humankind as she's wandered around and then but so she's like well i gotta throw them off the trail she's realized this i gotta get the hunters off the trail so i can actually like fulfill my biological imperative why doesn't she leave town 
Because there wouldn't be it's a, a movie. It's a good question. It's a good question. Yeah, she could. She's in a car most of the time. But she she's like, they keep on coming at me. Town. I think it's an offensive move almost. Like, it's a defensive offensive well, where I'm going to go. she's claimed her territory now and this is like her mating well, ground? Well, she knows. No, she just knows that she has to stop them from following her. True. And so the way that she's going to do it is to. I guess she Man. doesn't know anything else. Like, she doesn't know to just leave and go somewhere else. That's like, a she knows. thinks they're just going to the, keep this coming. This is the only city. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, that's, you gotta think about that. That's too. a missed opportunity because I would love to see a road trip version of this movie where she just roads trips across America with yeah, them on her right? tail. I don't think we get that in any of these movies. That would be delightful, though. Yeah. Well, this ends up like in the back in the hotel bar. Uh, there's like a, a lot of dynamics going on here after she's presumed dead. Of course, yes. a lot of them are like, you know, I don't think she's dead. But Ben King is like, it's over. Thank God we got her. She uh, cuts and dyes her hair because she saw that on same- TV. Yep. I'm sorry. The way she goes about this, I know she's an alien, but <laughs> <laughs> she has like the aspects that bother you. <laughs> she has her hair like covered in dye. Yeah. Like not up you, in you foil. You have cut your hair while you're dying. No, no never. never no, that? no, okay. no. And like the way she cuts her hair, she takes like big chunks and just like straight across with this big pair of scissors. And like but like her hair, like the hair is covered in dye. The scissors are going to slip on that shit, you know. Mm. Like, did she do it the way oh an alien would God. do? It? Was that method? I mean, was that like, wow? I believe she's not of this earth. No, but, no but human woman. Would it doesn't do it this make way. sense for her to get it ninety percent right, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, how is she getting it almost right, but just slightly off? Mm. That's what doesn't make sense. Box. No, I have no idea. Yeah, you're right. Mm, yeah. <laughs> um, she ends up, uh, well, she kind of uh, has an attraction for Michael Madsen's character. There's yes. this dynamic between Michael Madsen and uh, Mark Helgenberger that d- develops throughout the course of this movie that, like, I really liked that they right? have this kind of attraction. Yeah, so I'm talking about eroticism and, and romanticism in yeah, movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they actually, like, you know, do something about it. I guess I'm too used to TV where there, it's a will they or won't they for five seasons. Right. Like, oh. yeah. It's nice to see when, like, oh, look, they like each other. They're flirting. They know that each other likes each other. Yeah. It's refreshing. There's to see. nobody's yeah. playing it coy either. Right. It's like it it progresses kind like, of like yeah, when he ends real up the, right when he ends life. up in the door, she's like, Yes. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. They're, they're playing I, I mean love it, that. Yeah. it's a yeah, parallel. Yeah. It's great. It's a parallel to the movie because they're playing their own mating game as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it is a really it's a nice relationship. Yeah. Maybe that's why Michael Madsen's getting that, because he made that like that's Yeah, because nice. it was believable. Yeah. I guess the whole thing right. between the two of them was like it felt effortless, natural, yes. believable. Oh, I believe they improvised it, you know, their it was... love, their their uh, sex scene, as it were. They were allowed to improvise all that. So again, Michael Madsen, uh, improvisation, you know, genius at that point. And Mark Helgenberg. Mm-hmm. I yeah. mean, if that's all improvised, because that's why. I mean, it gives this movie like uh, a kind of a. I mean, because then then it doesn't feel everything all feels corga. It's not an explicit sex scene we're saying. Right. Just the kind of you know fumbling. Fun, yeah. You the know. Fun yeah. You would have. And this is all like. That's what I'm saying. Like when I say I want like eroticism in movies, I don't need like porn. This right, kind of right, stuff right, 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 is right, what yes, I'm right. talking this is about. Kind of like the kind of thing. just yes. you know natural, normal human things. That's yeah. all I'm Something asking for. Recognizable. <laughs> yes. Right. Like that seems like a human. Yeah. 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 In this movie, yeah, in this movie where we got superheroes and stuff, on something that is actually recognizable from my life. Exactly. Yeah. I can't like, jump into armor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I can have sex. Just some real human connection yes. that's relatable. Yeah. That's all I'm asking for. Which well, apparently is too much to ask now. Too much. Yeah. Too risky. Too risky mm-hmm. now. Yeah. We gotta we gotta no, wait for you'll braver. Turn, yeah, you'll turn mm-hmm. people less off. puritanical times yeah. ahead. Hopefully by <laughs> yes. the time we're like. I can't 90. wait for the like rebellion <laughs> against this to where everything just goes so far in the yeah. opposite you gotta direction. Wait, you got to wait like twenty years until kids it. grow up or whatever. Oof. And they, yeah. Um. So uh, and then because everybody hates. What their parents are doing. You got to wait mm-hmm. for like these, the, the, you know, the, the filmmakers now to get a hold of but, their but kids. Colin, yeah, my... We're going to get some freaky shit in about 20 <laughs> yeah. years. But Colin, my fear is that by then Disney will own every property mm-hmm. so that it'll all be censored by the mouse, you so know? We'll have just yeah. like underground shit. If, they, if they're not change. okay with Daryl Hannah's ass being in a movie, well, there's no hope for the future. Yeah, I know. That's the, yeah. The, Daryl Hannah used to show her ass in uh, Splash, but yeah. you will not see that now. If you You'll see a really bad, hairy censored. Photoshop job. That's so uh, why we're bringing it back to, like, why the digital. Why we're bringing species. You need uh, the physical media. Okay, so anyway, yeah. um, where all that stuff still exists. Um, yes. So she does uh, uh, have sex with Alfred Molina's character. 
Um, and that produces like she's immediately like, I even kind of like that scene. She was excited to show him like, look, you've given me a baby. <laughs> and I was like, if he would have reacted any other way, but like the only human reaction is like, what horror? the hell? Yeah. And then Absolute she... <laughs> abject horror. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And so she yeah, kills like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. It would not be fun to experience that in real life. Yeah. Um, so this leads to the last, uh, uh, the climax of the movie where the, heroes have to go after the alien I think we just had the climax the uh, into the yeah because this is where the movie becomes like up until this part right it is kind of uh, trucking along uh it's got interesting characters mm -hmm. and then <clears throat> and maybe this is just my impression of it so i'm looking at you guys to see how this goes but like they go into the sewer and then we got a mostly cgi alien sill it's it looks bad. It's not great. It's it designed by well. HR Geiger, but like the close ups of the whatever, Sean, you were saying it's not even really a person that's no, for, for most of the movie. They design the way they design Syl when you see her in alien form, it is uh, it's animatronic, but it's animatronic on purpose, mostly because of the way um, she's designed. She's very translucent. That was the goal when they made this alien. They want to be able to see through her. So if you look at the alien, you'll see, like Colin, you mentioned earlier, like if you look through her arm, her skin's translucent. There's different, like the insides of her are like all gear design discs and ridges and all that stuff. So she was mostly um, um, a model for most of this movie. There are scenes where they do have somebody in a suit. Um, especially with the water stuff, but no, she is, uh, to get that look, she is built. I'm going to make a confession that tonight is the first time of the, like four times I've seen this movie that I realized that I could see through that oh, she really? was translucent. <laughs> she so is? that's why I'm like the effect. I appreciate that it's there, mm -hmm. but I was unaware. I just assumed it was a person in a suit right? and couldn't tell the difference. True or false, the original uh, H.R. Giger design for the alien was supposed to be translucent, and then they sp they spray painted it, they colored it black. I'll I say heard true that just based on the way the head like, yeah. made its way through. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Because the head oh, yeah, is... Yeah, because yeah, yeah, you can see, you the, see the, yeah. the skull and everything, mm -hmm. so uh, probably. Yeah. I'm going to guess so. Okay, so this was him actualizing, like, I wanted to do this in Alien, I wanted it to be a translucent yes. creature. Yes, and they used that, um, the build and everything, as, you know, to add to the um, uh, the characteristics of the Alien, mm -hmm. just the way she moved and all that stuff. She so, yeah. has uh, nipple tentacles. She yep, does. that was the, like, the thing I remembered the most <laughs> about this I movie. I mean, that doesn't happen in a movie and you forget it. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. To me, this was the nipple tentacle movie. It yeah. is. They're, it's pro they're prodigious, I will mm -hmm. say, in alien form, very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for hentai fans out there, I don't even know <laughs> yeah. if I'm yeah. saying the right thing, but... Um, no, you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they strangle people, they whip out and, yep. uh, and poke and kill people. Yes, they are the mm -hmm. alien tale, but... but she nipples. has these dreams of... Um, Sill does where she sees, uh, you know, obviously we've got the distorted stretched camera angle mm -hmm. of what looks like uh, two alien creatures uh, possibly mating. And mm -hmm. I'm like this time around, I was like, because the, the, I guess the first time you always register that stuff is nightmarish imagery. But this time I'm like, this is her erotic imagery right. is her in her real form. Actually, like imagining, you know, this is alien. Yeah, sex it's a right. alien. We watch alien eroticism tonight is what we watch. Yeah. Right. I'm like, oh, oh OK, yeah. I'm dense. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, climax takes place in a sewer uh, and then. You know, the, 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 the cave with the, uh, you know, the, um, what'd you say? Like the prehistoric cave with the oil that hasn't been discovered. Right, yeah. yeah. It must have opened in the earthquake. <laughs> yeah. Um, then they enter, it's literally like they enter the birth canal at this point. Yeah, yeah I suppose, right? That's the imagery that Go you're going for. Yeah. You got the dripping Where stuff and it's all wet. And, yeah, yeah. And, uh, right. Cause she gives birth to the little alien, uh, baby kid. Mm hmm. Who's kind of like through the chest? Isn't yeah, it? it's like yeah, the he front comes part. out like through the front. It's gross. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. She, but she's the thing. So then she's going. Ah! Yeah, good noises. But mm -hmm. I mean, the imagery is a lot of like people walking around in the dark yes. on cat catwalks with uh, you know rifles flashlights with flashlights on them, and, all, and, yeah. and you become and crawling through tunnels, and you become like very aware that this is the kind of standard this like now we have movie, entered yeah. cliche dumb where yes. the mo the heroes fight the monster in the the cave um i mean is it it's like 
I know Michaela was like, you know, it would have been cool if she would have, you know, run through an amusement park or something. Like, well, because her, the- her escape plan every other point in the movie is to, like, just blend in with a crowd of people and disappear. Yeah. And then yet at the climax of the movie, it's to run into the well, sewers, which, like, we've seen in so many movies. Privacy for birthing, I suppose. This is true. Uh, she has to go somewhere where she can... I'll, I'll equate it to, like... If a cat's about to give birth, they, you know, they run and they hide. Yeah, like, I have to go but like there's more. I'm just saying there's more interesting places she could have sure. done that than the sewer. This you know, is very true. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's something that it feels like that you have to do, but it also kind of at the same time felt like. Have her climb to the top of a skyscraper or something. That would be yeah. fucking cool. Yes, you know, I something mean, like that. Definitely better places. But it's it got to be. But underground in the dark. is Does like, it have to be? scary. It, well, it translates into, I don't know. I mean, it's just the default place you I go. Mean, I there's still Maybe really- that's where it's like, that is when the movie becomes less inspired yeah it's exactly. like we're falling back on what right. we know and considering you know. what we've had up till this point it's a little disappointing that they just kind of fall back right. on that yeah mm-hmm. and that freaking cgi like sill darting around i mean like it's one of those it's things bad. where it does not hold up <laughs> no it doesn't <laughs> unfortunately all. which is too bad this is the stuff i you know george lucas like Go back and fix this. Like, make yeah. this look better. Right. right. That would be funny if that they actually did go back and, like, just redo the CGI of, like, old CGI movies. He's got time and money. Yeah. Just yeah. fix all. Yeah. Wouldn't George, be great? fix all the old that 90s be CGI. Yeah. Yeah. That I'd be for. <laughs> just redo it all. Yeah. That's win-win for everybody. Um, But uh, would you be surprised to learn that the uh, heroes do indeed blast the fucking monster in the face with a rocket launcher? I mean, Grenade launcher. Well, they killed the baby, too. I mean, mm-hmm. they had to wait till it changed into its alien form, but see, and I'm like, just kill the kid, right? They should have just fried the baby. Don't, yeah, don't, don't decide to like dial it back now. You've made it this far. Just shoot the baby in the face, you know? <laughs> yeah, we see this little like, alien. Why I mean, hold back now? Like <laughs> clearly, they know that any kind of like offspring of Sill is bad news, and you're gonna right. have a problem with right. it. Uh, they hold off, of course, because like, oh, you know, it's like a kid, but then it's, you know, what's it? <laughs> then you got to <laughs> and throw it. And of course, uh, Michael Manson gets his, uh, he gets his one liner. Let the go, motherfucker. Let go of her. Let go of him, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> Bam. Yeah, it is. Yeah. He gets his moment. It doesn't totally feel like a moment. It goes by pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like that should have been a bigger moment. Yeah. But. Okay. All right, but the we alien head explodes. And explode, yeah. Acid looking blood flies right. out of it as mm-hmm. it falls into the fire of the oil that's caught on fire. Mm-hmm. There's a big flaming end of the movie. But that's not all. There's a stinger. There's a stinger. There's a little, little mouse eating the, the nipple tentacle that was chopped uh-huh. off, right? And then the mouse shoots out a little, little tentacle from his mouth at the other mouse and sequel Ergo. setup. Sequel setup. Unfortunately, we do not get mouse. Monster sequel. We do not. No. We get space monster sequel and then clone monster sequel. Is, I never saw. That? I saw the second one. That, How well, many of them are there? Four. Get the fuck out. There's four of them. There's like the That's awakening and then there's another one. She's in the uh, um, uh, Natasha Henstridge reprises her role for the second one. That went to which theaters. is wacky. Like that movie's yeah. wacky. It switches. It's like it's a guy alien this time. She's a uh, she's clone. a clone. Yeah, because they uh, without an astronaut the goes into space, gets yeah. infected with basically the same thing that is the aliens. Comes back. They realize this, so they rebirth her in order to help her to help track him down. Yeah. It sounds and, like a movie you should bring to the freak show. Because he's it, like, it, I got a mate with a woman. It and yeah. the, is just, like it is a freak show movie, and there's a lot more of the getting women pregnant and like what happens when yeah. he starts, you know, fucking everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Mark in, Helgenberger, I think, comes back for that one. Michael right? Manson yeah. does. Oh, he does. Oh, okay. Helgenberger yeah. does. Um, I don't think Forrest Whitaker does. Okay, but I know unfortunate because unfortunate. he was a standout. I in could this be cast. wrong on that, but he, <laughs> yeah, but those two definitely come back. Okay, and yeah, the third one, I think they replace uh, Natasha Henstridge. She, yeah, she's at the end. Of, she's at the beginning of that movie, and then she is replaced. Okay. I don't know the uh, specifics about that. One. And the fourth one, Sean. Uh, the fourth one <laughs> was that nope. like a sci-fi movie? I mean, maybe that one. I know they, nothing they about. Went, you know, I mean, it was the booming DVD days, and right? you could crank a movie out, and boom, True. people would buy it. You can find them all on Screen Factory right now. There you go. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, we're going to tell you whether or not you should watch Species. We're going to go around the table and uh, give you a review of it. But before we do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman to bring us the mail. Read some of your mail. His name is Igor. Bring us the mail. 
Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Yeah, you know, sometimes his skin looks a little translucent. I mean, just like parts of him. Yeah. You can see through. But you can see Some... all the, the cogs inside his head. Yeah. <laughs> The parts that All have the been metal replaced. plates, yeah. <laughs> um, well, we should remind you how you can participate in this interactive portion of our show. All you got to do is follow along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show, Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Um, MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame, wants us to know that we are inducting someone onto the Wall of Fame tonight with Species, and that would be actor Richard Fancy, who played the <laughs> hospital doctor, who you would oh, recognize yeah. as uh, he was in the Lords of Salem. Yeah, of course. And he was also in Tango and Cash. So there you go. Uh, if you're in three movies that we've covered on this show. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, Thomas Crown wrote, writes in to say, I just found this channel today. Or the, he found us on YouTube, I oh. think. Uh, and I'm looking forward to listening to many of the episodes. It seems like we have some things in common with regard to our movie taste. A lot of good picks just strolling through the previous episodes. And he wants to let us know that he recommends 52 Pickup from Canon Films. All right. That's I'll put it on my Canon it. list. <laughs> like, All right. Yeah. That's yeah. a Roy Scheider movie, movie yes. if I remember. All yeah. right. Well, um, welcome aboard, sir. Yeah, welcome. Thank you for listening. Yes. Uh, about tonight's movie, Species. Species? Uh, Kryptonian Orphan says, I thought this was such a cool movie in 95. It had an all-star cast, a hot alien chick, creepy plot line, impregnation by literally fucking guys to death. H.R. Giger's design was always vague, but mostly blatantly sexual, and it's on full display in this movie. Highly recommended. There's a... <laughs> It's there's a good a, summary. There's a special feature on this uh, collector's edition where it's like 16 minutes of... Um, showing Giger in his workshop designing shit. Um, <laughs> I got high one night, and that's the special feature I just happened to choose to watch. <laughs> I don't recommend that, because that's some <laughs> that's some freaky stuff to yeah. watch for 16 oh, wow. minutes. Now I gotta I, go back and watch a, it. Yeah. A, I, uh, an impression was made on me. Let's oh. put it that way. Yeah, sometimes, like... Weed will heighten your senses of things. Too, I mean, it was too too much for certain it was, activities. It was, it was great, yeah. but it was just like whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Giger made an impression there. Uh, Jimbo Ice writes in. He says, "I remember expecting a sexy, scary time, and somehow walking away with neither." Of course, it's been probably about twenty years since I watched this one. Okay. Mm, well, we'll, get, you to we'll get to it. You're probably watching it again tonight because we're watching Obviously. it, right? I mean, are you playing along? Been a while for yeah. us too. Uh, Travis Legler writes in and says, I remember seeing this movie a few times and liking it, but not always remembering it. It seems like every time I watch the movie, it feels like the first time. Still, <laughs> I seem to remember enjoying it. I know an underrated actor like Michael Madsen is in is in it as Preston, and he had such a fun, short-lived show in the 90s called Vengeance Unlimited. Really? What? Wow. Well, I'm going to have to look into this because right, we'll that sounds that. interesting. Vengeance Unlimited. Sean, that sounds like something your work would show. <laughs> it does. <laughs> that, oh, yeah, that's definitely <laughs> on one of our channels. Yeah, right next to Renegade. Yeah. Yeah, right there you go, yeah. yeah. Uh, Michael Whitaker writes in and says, I didn't see this one until a few years after the fact, but I do remember it having this aura of being something almost like an erotic thriller. Sex was front and center in the marketing. I also remember when the sequel came out, how they still tried to market it as an erotic movie, but something about it didn't qu quite feel the same. Oh, yeah, because they flip it. Yeah. Ryan Handsome Jansen says, let's face it, most teenage boys, me included, watch this for only one reason. <laughs> Yeah, I think there was a, a large section Michael of Manson. the viewership that was for that. <laughs> yep. uh, last week, we watched a movie called Conan the Barbarian. Oh, shit. I fucked it up right there. Conan. Conan, Conan the Barbarian. Conan. Mm -hmm. Right. No, it's Conan. 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 Yeah. Uh, Robin, Conan. Linneman, <laughs> Robin Linneman Silverberg says, uh, what's Conan's favorite cereal? Mm. Sumerian Toast Crunch. <laughs> I like that. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot he was Sumerian. <laughs> uh, the week before that, we watched a movie called Cool as Ice. Grant Parrish said, I loved hearing you guys talk about this movie when confusion about Vanilla Ice happened. Everyone stopped and collaborated. I listened to why you freak stalked about how Ice's new invention, it's just too cold. Cool. I don't know what that was. What was his new invention? 
That that's f- all li- lyrics from oh, Ice Ice oh, Baby. Oh, okay. Yep, Ice, right. Stop uh, collaborating uh, and listen. Ice is back with a brand new invention. Right. That's how the song starts. <laughs> there you yeah. go. All right. Something uh, grabs sorry. a hold of me tightly. <laughs> um, <laughs> Keep going, McKay. <again. laughs> I know because it was I, asked you know on what? the last I have episode. Sung that... Enough on this show. <laughs> I want some rapping from dim, 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 dim. I'm laying it down. All right. Uh, Brett Williams says at the time this film was released on VHS, it was famous for having the fastest turnaround from theatrical premiere to release on home video for rental stores. In an age that films stream the same day as they're released in the theater, people may not know it took a year or more before films would show up on HBO or in mm-hmm. rental stores. I think Cool as Ice did it in a few months which was unheard of, but showed just how bad it had flopped at the time. That's that's crazy. Yeah, for that to happen in 91, that's nuts. Yeah. They just wanted more people to see it. Uh, uh-huh. Right? Yeah. Oh, you get the oh, word out Oh, Sean, there. do you think it had like a whole wall of Blockbuster? Just like the major <laughs> movies? Yeah. Definitely. Do you think there was cool as ice cutouts? Yes. Oh, why wouldn't there I know, be? I think there were. Actually. I mean, there I'm going to just scour uh, eBay and see if oh, they yeah, exist. Yeah. Yeah. I remember right we got the poster for it for sure, but there, I can't remember if there was a cutout. Anyway. There's got to uh, be a cutout with him in the motorcycle. There has Colin, I wish you had like a collection of like 50 cutouts. I know. I should have taken all that stuff. Yeah, I know. He's got all like organized by release right. date. Yeah, I was yeah. an idiot. Should have saved it all. We just <laughs> tossed them in the dumpster. I, right see, I, I so when I worked at Barnes and Noble, I kept a few, but we never really got good ones. Mm. The best one I think I kept was Black Swan, but I still threw it out eventually because they're really hard to store and like not right. fuck them up. You know? Have I have I showed you my Empire Strikes Back standing? Yeah, I have seen that okay. one. Yes, it's wonderful. Oh, <laughs> Uh, about so the week before that we watched a movie called the Beastmaster and Brett Williams wrote it again okay so on that show we uh, called what we later discovered were called the winged devourers and right. the Beastmaster we called them flash bats and we talked about That's what uh, they are and so Brett wrote into us and said something about you know the uh, flesh bats and flesh gloves and we were like what the fuck oh, is yeah. a flesh glove well he answers us tonight he Thank says you. oh colin how did you forget your choice of words for describing the covering for the robotic hand in i know who killed me yeah. it's emblazoned in my memory as the capstone of four freak show films that <laughs> turned out to be a miserable playlist for work that day all capped off with a laverne and shirley style <laughs> flesh glove waving to me at the end of the conveyor belt <laughs> Wow. Uh, th- yeah, sorry guys. As soon as we record, it's out of our memory. So <laughs> yeah, some, yeah, some of the stuff, yeah, it's just gone. I remember the uh, utterance of flesh glove. Yeah, but I don't remember where it comes yeah. from. Yeah, it's it's if, yeah. yeah it's, I know who killed me when she gets the robot hand. Yeah, in. I remember, yeah. Now I remember. Is a robot hand in that? I don't yeah, remember at the that end movie. Of the- you yeah. don't remember I know who killed me remember the dude cut it off with the, the well, she, crazy she, yeah, oh, with she, the, she's got she got crystal. a robot hand right. and remember we see her go to physical therapy for her robot right. hand and then remember it wasn't charged and she was like dang thing never holds a charge <laughs> remember that like I, how did, no how did I don't you, remember how that. did you forget I know who killed me <laughs> I mean that movie was wild answers. now you're now, I know now the listener is intrigued and is gonna have to go back and listen to right. that episode to find out uh, yeah. Add. Okay, there you go. Uh, so now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, Species. Species? Starting with... Species. Colin, you can go first tonight. What did you think of Species? I still like Species. I liked it when I saw it then. I'm going to recommend it now. Um, I think because of the aforementioned elements. I mean, the two major things are the cast, I think, is stellar for this, uh, you know... Um, this type of movie, a science fiction thriller. It, it is kind of like a chase movie, police procedural kind of thing. Um, and the sex appeal of N- Natasha Henstridge, Nastasha? Natasha, Natasha, Natasha Henstridge in this, which I think is like a very, in the nineties, maybe it wasn't as brave as, it, as I'm seeing it now, but it's mm. like, this is a pretty like, you know, a uh, bold thing to do. And it set her off on a career and it's like, you know, more power to you. M- you know, people will remember you forever mm-hmm. uh, for this movie. Uh, acting wise, I think she is better than you would expect her to be, you know, for what she needed to do for it. I think everybody's like, uh, like really good. Like you got, you have seasoned pros from better Oscar than we deserve winning movies, you know, teamed up alongside like independent film stars and newcomers and you know TV stars it's uh so it's cool just the dynamic i guess between all of those people is really what um i thought was special about this movie 
the computer generated effects, <laughs> unfortunately, are really in hindsight now, and I think it's probably just going to get worse the more we look at it. They're they're really bad, which you know, and I mean, I guess I am one of those guys who's always like practical effects or you know <laughs> but when you watch a movie Forever like this you endeavor. see it yeah ah. because the practical effects are better than the the cgi stuff in this maybe you couldn't do you know but i'm saying the practical effects work in the scenes that a practical effect would work right yes. and maybe they would not practical work in effect the... wouldn't work in the other yeah yeah jumping around on canyon walls well you'd shit. be able to do it but because right. fucking cameron did it in aliens and i was convinced you yeah. know but you're just, you just not able to right. stare at the y thing yeah, yeah i gotta, guess that's the you can do it yeah but they are not cameron we should say that's true actually i thought uh donaldson uh the director was better um up until he and this is where it really does feel like the ending doesn't make an impression because once you get to that kind of oh it's the horror movie ending with people crawling around in the dark there's a couple of scares that he tries there that like don't work at all because of his staging and the suspense that he tries to build up to it mm -hmm. and i'm like wow once you actually give him like a horror movie set piece he doesn't know how to do it he is yeah. not right. a horror movie director uh, but he was good up until then so um but yeah, I mean, uh, as a 90s science fiction uh, movie, it's, you know, one of the most memorable. I think it stands out uh, and I think it's pretty good. I'd say you got to see Species. <laughs> Michaela, what'd you think? Uh, so when I told my husband that we were watching this this week, he said, oh, that's a really good movie. And I said, is it or is it just catnip for 14 year old boys? Mm, and he was like. That's fair. And I, I think both things can be true. Yes, I was going to say. <laughs> I think both things can be true. Um, I Like I said, I think my impression, I had seen this before, but it's been a long time, but my impression growing up was this was like a trash movie, you know? And I think that's unfair. I think this movie has a really big budget and I was shocked by how expensive it looked. Like we were saying, there's helicopters literally flying all over this movie. Mm. And like this cast is impressive. Like... There is money put into this movie. The effects look bad just because of time, yeah. not because yep. of Yep, they were cheapness. expensive at the yeah. time. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's not because they cheaped out. It's because this is the best they could do in 1994 when it was being made. So, it, yeah, it's it's kind of a shame this movie has gotten like tagged with this like salacious kind of sleazy reputation because I don't think it necessarily deserved that. I think this is like an adult movie made for adults and that doesn't make it sleazy. There's nothing fucking wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with like this level of nudity or eroticism or anything like this is our, we're, this is our stupid society putting puritanical beliefs onto a movie made for adults that like, you know, just it's not hurting anybody to watch this movie. You know what I'm saying? Like, so just let us have these movies. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah I've like, heard it described as soft core, and I'm like, oh, this no is way. not a soft core movie. No, yeah, that isn't even the intention. No, of it, no, you know? no, this that, exactly. It's all about intention, mm -hmm. Colin, and that is not the intention of this movie. But yeah, it gets tagged with that reputation, and that's unfair. So you know what? If you've seen this movie, you owe it to this movie to correct that reputation. Anytime you hear someone speaking of that. Do your due diligence. <laughs> set people right. Do your goddamn job. And tell people, hey, quit thrusting like 200 years of puritanical beliefs that America stuffed down to your throat onto this movie. It Specifically is not use the word thrusting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is not this movie's job to like live up to those standards. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like it. I could continue on this whole thing, but I will stop. If you if you, if you want to hear me rant about like movies being like crucified for not living up to like weird uh like buttoned up american conservative standards there's tons of examples of that but this Stay tuned for our patreon uh, right yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's just that. yeah this movie uh there's a lot to love it's a, there's a lot to enjoy like i said i enjoy the chemistry between all the actors i think natasha henstridge is absolutely stunning and i think she does a great job i mean they don't do give her a lot to do but she does good at it i think we've seen models turn actresses that were much worse mm. Gal Gadot, maybe. Mm. Um, and I I really noticed in this movie how green her eyes were. And I didn't know if like that's actually how her eyes were or if like that was like something they did for the movie. But either way, I liked it. Um, we didn't really talk about, but the scene when she buys a wedding dress and then has a fanny pack over it was delightful. <laughs> that is nice. I, I love that. Like I like how she's accidentally, she, because she does come from the modeling world, like she ends up 
she looks like a model in this movie. Like, there's mm. a point where she's just wearing like a bra under a yeah. sports jacket. I'm like, that's the, a model. The Seinfeld, that is a runway the Seinfeld look. joke yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 <laughs> of yeah. Sue Ellen Mischke just yes. wearing a fucking bra under a blazer. Yeah, right. I saw that and I was like, wow, there's a Seinfeld joke straight <laughs> up in this movie. But I, I like. Th- I love a fish out of water trying to blend in the best they can scene. Like that's always so charming to me. And I, the fanny pick over the wedding dress was just a really delightful way of doing that. That just made it really seem really innocent. And I enjoyed that. So watch this movie, do your civic duty of correcting the reputation. You owe it to this movie. And you, and if you want to see adult movies, you, this is the groundwork starts here. So do it. There you go. Sean. What do yeah. you think? Champion these and we'll get more. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Species. Um, again, I first watched this when I was a young lad. Um, we can see why I have fond memories of it. Um, uh, watching it as I'm older now, uh, you know, like everybody said, I mean, the cast is really good. Um, looking back at it now, yeah, it is surprising that they got, you know, this really great group of actors together for a movie like this. Um, I, You know, the budget's up there. They're just throwing money at it. Uh, the effects, I think, are great. Um it's yeah, Michaela, I think you're right. This movie has probably had a bad reputation and it watching it again tonight, it definitely doesn't deserve it. Um, the only thing I can say I'm probably bad about this movie is it is it does feel long at times. I'm convinced you could cut 15 minutes out of this just in. I don't know. Um, yeah, you could probably cut 15 minutes out of this. I think the director didn't have the best like economy of a scene when he was filming this stuff and everything um i don't think he's the greatest director in the world but um but i think they came out with something special um in 1995 uh it's uh be a great double feature with contact um i think it uh, like we said tonight i think it's a good um uh adult movie and you i think at this point you know what i mean by that um yeah i had a good time with it um i recommend species it's a good movie there it is. All right, that's Freak Show approved. I think so. All right. Holly I, I missed will, out. We'll say Holly. Holly would say, <laughs> yes. I think she would enjoy I think it. Yeah, I think it's a good movie. I, I think, I think it is a good movie. I think uh, I think you, it deserves to be rewatched and reappraised. Yeah. All right. So uh, that species next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Holly. Holly has prepared a statement. Oh, oh, oh man. Oh, <laughs> boy. Okay. okay. Um, right. This is my movie is going to be. Okay. No, this is, this is a full on statement oh. uh, from the desk. Of Holly. Oh, okay. No. Okay. Uh, there is an iconic figure that we've been dancing around for long enough. It's time we finally explore the world of style, endless beautiful women, and martinis, shaken, not stirred. Next week, we'll be discussing all things James Bond, but since it's the freak show, we're also going to space. We will be watching Moonraker. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Moonraker. Moonraker. Okay, we're, we'll have thoughts. Okay, so that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us as usual. And until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs>